Well, good afternoon. The last little while has been hard on all of us. I know the strain that this period has put on people. Staying at home, staying apart. It's been tough on all of us. But I'm so proud of how Ontario has responded. We've made the most of a terrible situation. And during this time, it's more important than ever that we find ways to stay connected, to stay active, stay motivated. And it's no secret that one of my family's favorite ways to do this is baking. Baking is a great way to relieve some stress and make some nice memories with loved ones. It's a great family friendly activity, especially for the long weekend ahead. And I know many of you are enjoying some baking while staying home the last little while. But I also know that many of you are noticing some shortages of key goods at grocery stores. I saw it firsthand earlier this week when I went to pick up a few things to make my cheesecake. I know that people out there are seeing some shortages from flour, yeast, and sugar to disinfecting wipes and toilet paper. I know these shortages are top of mind for many folks out there, and I want you to know that they're top of mind for me too. That's why we're doing everything we can to ensure you and your family can access essential household products like flour, yeast, and sugar. This morning, I had a phone call with many of the leaders of our consumer goods and food supply chain companies. They've been working around the clock to keep our shelves stocked. After a productive discussion, I'm happy to report our supply chains remain strong. We have more than enough of these essential products in the system. The key is ensuring that everyone only buys what they need. If we stay considerate of one another, there should be more than enough to go around. And at the same time, the industry is working as quickly as they can to get more production going. They've ramped up production on essential goods in high demand to get them on our shelves. I want to thank everyone who've been working overtime. Our incredible farmers, our truck drivers, and everyone in between to keep our supply chain strong. You're absolute champions. And while these hardworking folks have our backs, we have theirs too. And I know that many of our farmers out there are struggling right now. You're looking for support, and I want you to know that you have an ally and a champion in our government. I'll be at the table with the Prime Minister and our federal counterparts, and I want to thank my incredible Minister of Agriculture, Ernie Hardiman. He's been fighting hard for the sector, demanding a fair share for our hardworking farmers. We need the federal government to step up and increase support for our Canadian farmers, because our farmers are the salt of the earth. You toil from dusk till dawn to feed our country, and I want you to know that I stand with you, and thank you. Finally, ahead of the Victoria Day long weekend, I want to wish everyone a happy, safe, and healthy weekend. And don't forget, use common sense. The best line of defense is keeping two meters apart. Before I pass it to Minister Sicaria, I just want to congratulate him and his wife on their new baby girl, as a proud father of four girls, I can tell you, nothing compares to that feeling. So congratulations, Pravmeet, on becoming a dad. Now I'll turn it over to, to Pravmeet. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Premier, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. What's been clear throughout this pandemic is the importance of all of us, as Ontarians, working together in the fight against COVID-19. This, of course, includes our dedicated heroes, those serving on the front lines in our healthcare system, but it also includes those who ensure we have food on our tables and the products we need in our day-to-day -day lives. In the last few months, many people have called, texted, and emailed us expressing concerns about whether the essentials would be on the store shelves. Well, I want to say thank you to those that are part of the enormous and complex supply chains that keep us healthy and connected. Thank you to those working from farm to table to keep us fed. Thank you 
to the thousands of Ontarians who've clocked into work each day during this crisis, making sacrifices to ensure food and essential products are on store shelves when we need them. So next week, after almost two months of closed doors, when you see a gradual opening of Main Street, remember to say thank you by shopping local and helping your community rebound and thrive. Lastly, to the businesses preparing to reopen safely, we are here to help. Along with our safety association partners, we have created nearly 90 guidelines to prepare workplaces for the new environment and better protect staff and consumers. If you're having trouble finding enough personal protective equipment or safety supplies for your business, please visit our website at ontario.ca forward slash PPE to help connect you with vendors who can help. Thank you and have a safe and happy Victoria Day long weekend, everyone. Enjoy your weekend, practice social distancing, and if you want to make a delicious treat for your family, please tune in and learn to bake with our Premier. Stay safe, Ontario. Thank you. We'll go to the phone line for questions. Just a reminder, one question, one follow-up. So I, I guess be, just before the, the questions, I just want to tell the public again, have a, a safe, uh, long weekend. Uh, I did a little bit of protesting in my office. I want to come in tomorrow. But I think my staff, they need, they need, a, they need a break. And uh, they've been working literally around the clock every single day. I want to say a special thanks to the best Deputy Premier, Minister of Health, uh, Christine. You've been here every single day beside me standing shoulder to shoulder with me and I'm just so proud and so honored to have an incredible person like uh, Christine Elliott uh, standing with me every day. So Christine, I think you need a break too. I think we all do. So in enjoy the, the long weekend. I'm so grateful for all your, your support. So uh, unfortunately, I, I might be out there protesting with a protester saying I want to work tomorrow. So Jamie, if you meet me here, and Jamie, Jamie's another uh, champion that's been working the cameras and Ivana. Uh, that are here every day. So thank you, both of you. You're you're absolutely incredible. So let's uh, let's get to the questions now. First question. Your first question comes from Travis Saraj with Global News. Please go ahead. Hi, Travis. Uh, hi there, Premier, uh, and congratulations to Minister Zakaria uh, on yes. his new arrival, and Premier on your new arrival of the cheesecake. I was watching the, uh, <laughs> the video this morning. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, thank um, you. But I want to ask you about the uh, the restrictions. Uh, yes. that are coming into effect this weekend and on Tuesday, the lifting of these restrictions. I, I've been getting a lot of messages from parents who say they are uh, eager to go back to work, but logistically they don't know how that is going to happen because they don't have childcare and their kids are at home, obviously, because school has not resumed and mm -hmm. they can't afford a babysitter. Uh, what would you tell these parents who don't qualify for the emergency childcare benefit and are stuck now between going to work or taking care of their kids at home? Well, the uh, number one priority, I've always believed, is your family. Uh, family comes first. But uh, Minister Lecce is coming out with an announcement on Tuesday. So uh, the first day back, uh, Minister Lecce will have an announcement about childcare and about uh, schools moving, moving forward. Okay. And also, um, when it comes to some of these... Uh, professional services that are now going to be permitted as a Tuesday. I'm thinking mm -hmm. specifically, um, you know, uh, domestic services like nanny services, babysitting. How are folks supposed to maintain social distancing, for example, a babysitter while, you know, carrying out their duties in a, in a home that may not be theirs? Yeah, I, I guess the same way as we're going to do childcare when we uh, open up and how they're doing childcare right now. Uh, to the best of their ability, uh, to be in the house, obviously keep uh, keep an eye on the on the kids, but to their best ability, and using common sense, um, you know they, they they keep their distance. And uh, you know there's there's what I hear constantly, Travis, uh, from all the health professionals, uh, three three uh, areas that we have to focus on, and everyone's heard it a million times, and I'll say it again: wash your hands constantly when, when possible put disinfectant, uh, you know, on, on your hands. Uh, the social distancing, keep two, two meters uh, away. And when you're out in public, I heard Dr. Tam this morning mentioning about uh, wearing a, a face covering of uh, some sort. 
I guess it just protects a lot of people, the, the face coverings. So we're, we're doing a great job, everyone in Ontario, Travis, and they're, everyone's pitching in and pulling in the same direction. I'm, I'm just so grateful. Uh, we've come so, so, so far. And uh, we're, we're going to continue moving in, hopefully, in this direction. Next question. Your next question comes from Mark Douglas with 680 News. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, question right. first for uh, for the Premier, or perhaps the Associate Minister wants to take this one. But sure. um, on Tuesday, when retail reopens, the stores inside shopping malls do not get to reopen. That's There's correct. obvious concerns about crowd control yes. uh, and physical distancing inside shopping malls. So I think it's obvious why they're not allowed to reopen. But it is going to put those stores at a great disadvantage. A store that sells clothing in the Eaton Centre, a high-end store in the Eaton Centre, can't reopen, but the same a high-end clothing competitor out on Young Street, they can reopen. Uh, is there going to be any way to compensate or specifically help out stores in sh inside uh, shopping malls financially or through any other means? Yeah, it's a, a very, very good question. I will hand it to the minister, but uh, the, you know what about this crisis and the pandemic? There, there's a lot of things, Mark, that just, just aren't fair, and I, I understand it's, it isn't fair. Uh, but these are the... Uh, protocols that the chief medical officer uh, has put out there and by the way he's, he's a very fair gentleman uh, and he's doing everything he can to make sure he tries to keep everyone equal but in some cases if we opened up the malls I think everyone would know I opened up uh, Yorkdale the place would be packed and we, ju we just can't have it so um, we're, we're going to uh, continue moving forward and, and hopefully in stage two or stage three when that time comes uh, they'll be able to they'll be able to open the doors, but I'll, I'll pass it over to Minister Sarkaria. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that. And I'll just build on uh, what the Premier uh, was uh, stating there. We've seen uh, in, uh, unprecedented times and the impacts on these businesses. I've had the opportunity to, to hold over 30 roundtables uh, with uh, businesses across uh, this region. And there are uh, very real uh, consequences that, that, that do come up. And I want to assure them that uh, this government it wants to be a partner with them. Uh, I know uh, that many of them have been able to scale up their e-commerce platforms, uh, curbside uh, pickup uh, opportunities as well for those in, in these retail uh, malls. Uh, but I think as we work with our uh, health partners, uh, our chief medical officers, uh, towards uh, this uh, phased uh, approach uh, in stage two and stage three, we'll take uh, the advice and try to get uh, Ontario back on track as much as possible. We've also uh, outlined over 90 uh, different uh, protocols for businesses to, to follow uh, to, able to, be, uh, to, able, to be able to support uh, the reopening of these businesses uh, that are opening on, on Tuesday. Uh, and so I think uh, there's a great opportunity for us uh, to work with them, uh, but we do uh, hear those concerns and, and those uh, uh, do uh, dwell on us uh, quite a bit and we want to make sure that uh, we operate and uh, open the economy in a very uh, a strategic way, a phased approach uh, that supports our, our small businesses as well. A uh, follow-up question to the Premier. Uh, you, you were talking about your advice to everyone for the long weekend uh, about physical distancing and there's going to be an incredible temptation uh, to gather at cottages at people's backyards, have a little backyard fireworks show if, when, you know, when all the uh, public yeah. fireworks are, are cancelled. Aside from actually just advice about not gathering together, it, is there any way the province can somehow uh, restrict uh, uh, or prevent gathering? You know, I've always, I've always said, Mark, we, we just don't have enough uh, bylaw officers or police officers and we've always relied on the on the public and they've, they've done an incredible job it, you just can't police 14 and a half million people but uh, as dr williams said uh, i think it was uh, a few days back as he went to go see his grandchildren practice social distancing and uh, that that's the most important thing right now we're we're moving forward in a real uh, really good way right now and we just want to keep the numbers going down and all the credit goes to the people of Ontario. If uh, they didn't follow the protocols from the chief medical officer, we wouldn't be in the position that we're, we're in right now. So let's, let's just, uh, as I always say, use common sense, focus on social distancing. And I know it's tough. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's tough right now. Uh, not seeing loved ones, not being able to, to hug them and, but uh, just, just practice on social distancing. 
Next question. Your next question comes from Cynthia Mulligan with City News. Please go ahead. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Premier. Hello. Hi. As of midnight tonight, thousands of commercial tenants are in danger of being evicted if they weren't able to make their May rent. And I'm hearing many are, are extremely concerned that this is, this is going to lead to massive amounts of evictions. Why haven't you put a moratorium on commercial evictions? New, ev evictions. New Brunswick, New Nova Scotia have done it. The Canadian Chamber of Commerce has called for it. So has the Retail Council of Canada. Well, going back, there's 1.2 uh, million uh, leases. This came out, uh, came up in the conversation with the premiers and the, and the, the, the prime minister. Um, I'm, I'm just asking the landlords. Uh, this, this program uh, should be rolling out by, by next week. But, uh, you know, the, the tenants, I, my heart breaks for them. I, you know, I, to be honest, I, I side with the tenants. Like, give them a break. Let them, let them uh, you know, get in there and, and pay 25%. Between the, the federal uh, government and the provincial government, we're, we're paying 50% uh, of the rent. So we're, we're helping them. And, and the landlords, you, you have to be flexible. And put it this way, uh, you know, if, if the tenant uh, moves out, what, do you, what, what does the landlord think? They're going to have a, an army of people wanting to move in? You know, people are struggling. They, they're going to sit there vacant. So if I were them, I'd, I'd take 75%. I, I think that's a pretty good deal for, for landlords. You either get 75% or you get zero. When you get zero, you're still paying your taxes. So, you know, give, give these small businesses a break. They, they work their backs off. They're trying to survive. You know, we'll get through this. And there'll be opportunities and later on to, uh, to to help each other out, but give these poor people a break. They're trying to survive. So that, that's that's my point of view on it, Cynthia. Thank you. And my next question: I'm getting a lot of emails from people who are on ODSD, people with disabilities, and and they feel that they've been largely ignored throughout this and they say the cost of food is rising and it was tough for them to make ends meet before and now it's impossible. Could you not give them a little bit of a bump up and, and some help or assistance through this time? Well again, everything's on the table. We're, we're trying to support uh, so many people out there right now, Cynthia, and, and I know they they need a little, little bump and, and I guess everyone needs a, a little bump. And, there's just so much money to go around. I, I, I want to help them. If it was up to me, Cynthia, I'd give everyone a bump. I, we just just don't have the money. That's that's just the facts. Uh, you know, even on the bump on the the premium pay, we we have 375,000 people we gave it to. And I, I told our team the other day, I wish I could give it to everyone. Absolutely, everyone deserves it because there's so many people and, and the, the the pandemic pay. We try to focus on the people that are right in the trenches, like dealing face to face with people with COVID that are putting their lives on the line every day. That's what it was geared for. And then it escalated up to 375,000 people. And they're all deserving, by the way. And I bet there's another 500,000 people out there deserving too. We just don't have the money. That, that's what it comes down to. But well, thank you. Next question. Your next question comes from Christina Tenalia with CP24. Please go ahead. Hi, Premier and Minister. Thank you for Thank taking you. my question today. Uh, Premier, we continue to hear from many people who are wondering that if a babysitter, a nanny, or a house cleaner can enter their home, uh, why not, as one senior asks us, uh, can she not have her daughter come clean her home as she always has pre-pandemic? Uh, why can't uh, she have her grandkids come over yep. to visit? Uh, so if you could provide some direction on this, yep. if some of these uh, professional services can come into the home, what about family members coming in to help or even small group visits, considering the, yep. the provincial order and law is still a maximum of five people? Well, Christina, I got to tell you, when I, when I get questions from yourself and other people from the media, uh, I find it ironic. I ask the exact same question as, as what you asked. And it's about social distancing. And I'm, I'm going to use Dr. Williams again when he went to see his grandchildren. He said, hey, we were out on the porch. We social distance. That, that's what it really is, just using common sense and practice social distancing. But, Christina, I asked the exact same question as you asked. And uh, the answer I got this was what I just uh, replied. Uh, 
practice social distancing, stay, stay outside. If you're going to have a, a barbecue, make sure you're, you're two feet uh, away from each other. I'm sorry, two meters away from each other. Um, but you, you make a good point, a uh, very good point. So practice social distancing. If you're going to go see your grandchildren, your, your kids, if you can be outside, uh, stay outside and, and have a barbecue. Thank you, Premier. Uh, my second question, of course, you're well aware a number of GTA mayors have raised concerns about reopening. They feel that the, the, the story is a really a case of two pandemics. Uh, mm -hmm. The GTA, of course, has been hard hit, and, and the situation in the GTA in terms of COVID-19 is much different than the rest of the province. Uh, so the, the concern from some mayors, uh, including you know, Mayor Tory, uh, mm -hmm. Mississauga Mayor Bonnie Crombie, is that not every municipality is ready to open, uh, mm -hmm. pointing out that infections remain higher in big cities than in outlying areas. Mm -hmm. What's your message to some of these big city mayors? Well, I, I talked to uh, Mayor Crombie just the, the other day, and she, she mentioned it. And uh, my, my comment to all the mayors, we have 444 municipalities. Uh, we got into this together. We're going to get out of it together. And, and no one is putting a gun to anyone's head uh, to open businesses. If businesses aren't ready to open and Mayor Crombie doesn't think the businesses in Mississauga are ready, by all means, don't open up. If you are busy, I mean, if you are ready, then then the, I have to go with the chief medical officer's advice uh, to, to open up. But I, I just, I, I question, like Mississauga and be it Brampton or any regions, um, you know, they, they know their people, they know their businesses. If the businesses don't want to open up, then, then don't open up. No, no one's forcing you to open. But I know one thing, guess where the people from Mississauga are coming? And I love the people of Mississauga. They're, they're coming to their other regions that are open. So that's what I mean. It's, it's very hard to, to balance. I, I, matter of fact, I can assure you, if businesses were close to Mississauga, they're going to areas that border Mississauga and then talk to those, those people to find out if that's fair. Again, people expect us to work together. And we've been working very well with, with municipalities and, and the federal government. So I have an idea. Why don't, why don't we all continue working together? That would be the best bet. Next question. Your next question comes from Laura Stone with the Globe and Mail. Please go ahead. Hi there, Premier. Hi, Hi Laura. I think a lot of people are wondering or intrigued, interested in how the government came up with the list of businesses and activities as part of stage one. You have a very diverse cabinet and caucus. And mm -hmm. um, from what I understand, you know, some people were pushing for more things to reopen. Some That's people right. were pushing for a more cautious approach yeah. and that it was a passionate discussion. So can you shed some light on some of the discussions you've had internally and what kind of debate that you've had on reopening the province? Well, we have a vigorous debate. Uh, there's, there's a tale of two provinces. I've always said this. There's the urban centers, and then there's the rural centers that we don't have as many cases. And I, I, under, I understand that. But right now, we have to be methodical. We, we have to be super cautious uh, opening up. And we, we vetted this list upside down, sideways. Uh, we went to the stakeholders, uh, spoke to them as, as well, uh, talked to a lot of municipalities about it and talked to the people and we brought it back and debated it within uh, caucus and then it went to uh, a committee and then the committee debated it and then it goes to another committee and then it finally comes forward to the health table and then the health table uh, decides yay or nay they have the they have the final say uh, the health table we have to always rely on the health experts so we debated this to death and then we pass it the last decision uh, comes from health table and they'll they'll tell us Yes, no, yes, no, down the, down the row. And uh, that's how it works. Thank you. Uh, and on another topic, um, some cottage owners in Ottawa want to access their cottages in the Gatineau Hills, which is mm -hmm. just over the bridge, uh, but they can't cross into Quebec because of ongoing restrictions. So I'm curious as to whether you pleaded their case with Premier Legault and if Ontario has any plans on stopping Quebecers going into Ontario to shop or travel? Well, we just recommend that people stay within their own their own province. We've had this conversation with Premier uh, Legault. They're, they're facing some extremely tough times in certain areas of, of the province. And, 
And I think all the premiers have agreed, uh, let's stay within our own boundaries uh, right now and, and hopefully in the next little while, uh, if the numbers continue to go down, then they'll be able to uh, go to their, their cottage uh, on, in Quebec there. Next question. Your next question comes from Allison Jones with the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, Premier. Hi, Allison. Uh, just to follow up on Cynthia's question about commercial uh, evictions, you say that you're on the side of tenants and you're asking landlords to be flexible. I know Minister Phillips has said in the past, um, let's just wait for this federal provincial rent relief program to roll out. But I'm not sure I've heard from either of you what the downside would be in putting in place even a temporary pause on commercial eviction. Well, I, I, again, I, I, I think that it, and this, this is very, very possible. When someone signs a contract uh, for a long-term lease, and the government steps in there, uh, there's, there's a lot of legal issues we'll, we'll deal with as well. What I'm asking, I'm, I'm pleading landlords, be flexible. You're getting 75% of the rent. Things could be a lot worse. Like I said, you could have zero, zero percent. Help someone out, give them a break and uh, work with them for, for the next few months. It's not like there's a lineup of, of tenants waiting to get into their, their, uh, you know, their businesses or their buildings. It's just not happening. So I don't know, as a business person myself, you either get zero or you get 75%. And you, you, not only do you not get, you get zero, but you're still paying maintenance, you're still paying uh, costs, electricity, you're still paying taxes. So hang in there, work, work with them for 25%. Be, be a good landlord, support them. You know what drives me crazy? I can't stand these vicious landlords. They are, they, you gotta protect the little guy all the time. They're struggling, and uh, so I, I just I just wish they could hang in there for for a couple uh, months. It's not gonna it's not gonna be the end of the world, it's, and uh, just protect protect the small businesses. And uh, to all of you big landlords out there, have a heart. And speaking of small businesses, uh, on Tuesday, quite a few small businesses will be allowed to reopen, um, but it will likely be quite some time before they see anything close to regular revenues returning. Are you planning any sort of targeted stimulus for small businesses as they're allowed to reopen? Well, we worked uh, hand in hand with the, the federal government and uh, there's so many times I, I come up here and I say, you know, we need support of the federal government. They've been incredible. You know, the deputy prime minister and the prime minister, they have constantly uh, responded, not just to myself, but other premiers when we need support, they're on the phone uh, right away saying, how can we help you? You know, with, with municipalities, how can I help you? So they're, they're incredible and we have a great uh, uh, working uh, relationship. So the, the small businesses, I know uh, they have access to a $40,000 uh, dollar, dollar loan and we're working with them also a billion dollars towards the uh, rent subsidy as, as well. Uh, we're reducing or holding the electricity rates. We're supporting them on, on when they when they hire uh, staff. So, I, I think uh, I think we've done quite a bit. Do I wish we could do more? Yes, I, I wish we could do more, but it goes back to we just we just don't have the money, and uh, we don't have the printing press that uh, the feds have. But in saying that, the federal government ha have been absolute champions, in my opinion, always stepping up for us. Last question. Your final question comes from Rob Ferguson with the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, Premier. Um, hi, Rob. Um, just wanted to ask about, uh, yesterday you were talking about, you know, at, at some point soon we're going to probably go back up to an allowable crowd size of 10 mm -hmm. from the current five. Um, when when can people expect that? I, I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking because... The, some people think there's a discrepancy between, uh, with, you know, people being allowed to go into more stores and house cleaners, for example, being allowed to visit yeah. two or three houses a day. Mm -hmm. um, so there's household mixing with cleaners yeah. going to be going back and forth. So why not just yeah. boost the crowd size up to 10? Well, and, I'm gonna, and when will that happen? Yeah, Rob, I'm going to pass this over to the Minister of Health. Thank you. 
Hi, Rob. That is something that we are studying very closely right now, the, the idea of um, uh, bubbling, cohorting, increasing the numbers, because I know that people are wanting to spend more time with uh, family and friends. So the Chief Medical Officer of Health is giving that very serious consideration. And you can expect to hear from us, I would expect, next week on that issue because with the warmer weather coming I know people will want to be getting together for barbecues and other occasions so uh, we are looking at the, the, the safest and healthiest way in order to do that okay thanks for that uh, minister and another one uh, for you just on this glitch with the numbers um, were, were these the missing were these missing cases from Toronto or otherwise, how did this happen and how are we going to avoid it in the future? This was actually just a, a, a technological glitch with our system that uh, we only found out about uh, yesterday after our, uh, our press conference and after the, uh, the numbers were reported. Uh, it has been rectified. We don't expect it's going to be happening again. It's just that for whatever reason, the number 87 cases from the City of Toronto weren't uploaded. But we have fixed that problem. And so while the, uh, the number isn't as good as we thought yesterday, it still is good in that the total number of cases from yesterday were actually 341 and they're 300, sorry, 345 and they're 341 today. So we are still seeing a gradual, slow downturn, but that's exactly what we need to see in order to continue to open up our economy. Thank you, everyone. That's great. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Safe weekend.